Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a beer from Sierra Nevada. This is their 2022, right? Yeah, oh wow, that's really fun. I really like that. Um, have it really obvious on the bottleneck of when this was brewed. So if you have vintages of this beer, which would be a great beer to age, 10.2% Imperial Stout, Narwhal Imperial Stout. So this was bottled about less than two months ago, but I mean, hey, this beer. <laughs> is pretty much bulletproof. <laughs> I would age the hell out of this guy and not worry about it. So, let's see this guy. Um, this used to be a rare that I really did not like that much, even though I was a huge Imperial Stout fan. I think I was impressed most recently. But let's give you another kind of solid, solid impression of this beer. Uh, how's the beer for it? No, it wasn't even really paying attention. Pretty dark. Like, not pitch black, not like inky, but like very dark black. And like this is definitely black in the glass. And then actually you can see how dark it is. At least well, the head is quite dark. It is a that's a very dark head. I mean that's a um medium plus tan head, right? Or dark tan head. I mean that's pretty dark. That's as dark as a head you'll get. So So the noticeable thing on the nose is that this de beer is definitely American style, right? It is definitely quite hoppy. Um, there is, I think they use Equinot and like Cascade. Sorry, I'll, I was just on the website. I guess they have like an extra lot of Equinot. Equinot is generally not used as a bittering hop, and this is probably just most. They're sorry, almost most or <laughs> completely likely uh, all just bittering hops. So, but on the nose, um, I get like just big notes of like. Pine, like like sweet pine. It's like like orange marmalade and big sweet dank pine. Like it's like sticky. It's like sticky resiny pine. Yeah, it's a very noticeably American in that like sense of like hoppiness, right? And then underneath you get a little bit of like cocoa. Um, there's this uh, really nice kind of char going on. I believe there's actually, yeah, for sure, there's a little bit of smoke malt in here, uh, but hints, like, it's not obviously a smoke beer, um, but it's, like, dark chocolate, um, hints of smokiness, a little bit of rack red. <sighs> yeah, it's a really nice combination of just, like, the flavors that American Stout do well, right? It's, like, orange marmalade, pine resin, um, like, espresso, uh, dark chocolate, a little bit of smokiness, a little bit of rack red, kind of, like, burnt character. It was awesome. Cheers. Maybe I'm crazy, but I feel like this beer's gotten better with age. Or, like, not age, but, like, through the years. Like, I feel like early on, I found this beer lacking mouthfeel, thin, boozy. And this, to me, is just, like, right up there. Maybe not, like, the best, 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 but, like, up there with some of the great, like, just shelfy Imperial Stouts. Like, just up there, right? Um, it's so good. Like, this is right up there with, like, Old Rasputin, Great to Buy Yeti, Ten Fitty. You know, like, just, like, listening of, like, oh, that's a great question. If they still make it, um, Stone Imperial Stout is one of the greatest. Like, I did a full blind a handful of years ago. You guys can check out the review. Um, hopefully I remember to post it, otherwise you can find it if you like search, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, that that, uh, that that one won for me, but... Huh. I'm going to take a gamble. And I'm going to swear that this beer has just gotten better with age. Or not with age. <laughs> Again, I keep saying the word more. Uh, has gotten better in years. Um, oh man, this is good. Ooh. <sighs> okay. Sulky, luscious mouth up front. Um, a little bit of re residual sweetness. Um, you get nice kind of like um, intense kind of like hoppy and bitter flavors on the back end. There's a combination of like piney, resiny bitterness, that flavor compound of the hops, along with just like... Um, Actual just standard bitters, along with like kind of like roasty espresso bitterness. So it's like this is for sure a robust and very bitter beer. 
Baker's chocolate, dark roast coffee for sure. Uh, big, a big um, up front. Um, again, that, that really kind of expressive, kind of like pine needle orange marmalade note really comes out quite nicely. Um, this beer is actually, despite the luscious character, not as sweet as some other Imperial Stouts. It leans on bitterness, but it still has a nice kind of like balancing kind of sweetness to it. Um, the general flavors fall all the way through, right? Like dark chocolate, um, espresso, bitterness, the, the pine and the coffee bitterness. Oh, yeah. A little bit booze. Wow. Okay. So now I'm talking about it. So this beer always felt a little bit thin and boozy. I, now I got a big smack of it. So be careful with this guy. It can get a little bit boozy. Like, you know, again, we're talking about 10% beer. It's quote unquote always boozy, right? But there are beers that like sort of hide it. There's a little bit of luscious character. There's always some amount of sweetness sometimes that sort of um, bounces out. Now as it slightly warms up, it does have a little bit of fusel. Alcohol kiss on the back of the throat. Um, it thins out a little bit as the alcohol tends to show. So yeah, there are hints of what I remember the beer being. So maybe I'm not crazy. <laughs> what I remember this beer being is still sort of there, but mm. Mm. a little bit of dark fruit comes in as well. There's a little bit of hints of like dehydrated cherries, prunes. And then like a solid, just acrid, sticky, kind of just like, not quite a little bit smoked, but like just like burnt and, and deep and bitter, comp complemented by the hot bitterness. And honestly, that can be very disgusting. Like that com combination of like espresso, dark chocolate bitterness with pine, bit like right, like we're, just we're just compiling bitterness on bitterness. But it hits at a point where, again, like you're just right there, right? You're, you're pushing on the wall pushing on the door up, like trying to open it up always uh to the point where it's like oh this is nasty but like you're just like just like like you know just pushing on the door but not quite opening it right so it's like right on that edge which is quite fun um but obviously i think for a lot of people it'd be a little bit too intense it, it is very intense beer so um quite nice i really enjoyed this guy that's your rating as you warm it up it does show some more quote unquote flaws. Again, very impressive with it as I had it, but then I should find my thermometer. I have like kids' thermometer, which like zap it. I think I, I don't know if that would work. <laughs> Just zap it right there and see like what the temp is. But I suspect I'm hitting like 45, 50 degrees. I'd recommend this guy probably at like 42, like under 45 for sure. Like I probably have it like a little bit warmer and like as it warms up. Gets thinner, a little bit boozier. Again, I was thinking about like, oh yeah, like you know, this beer like sort of sucked when I you know didn't really like it and blah blah, and like now it's so amazing. But all right, it's still fine. <laughs> um, very good beer style. Ninety one. Ninety one. That's Sierra Nevada No Wall. Absolutely fantastic. Very tasty beer. Great nostalgia beer. Um, again, beer that's been around for quite a while. Definitely age it if you have some. But um again, sort of has hints of like what I'm talking about, like be careful. Really complex beer, but like as you drink it more it could use a little bit more going on. Like just the, the, the it's just a hair dry for me. Like it's just a hair dry. Um, being a hair dry makes the alcohol sort of sing a little bit more. Uh, the bitterness sort of like tends to like get out of balance without that sweetness, and then the booze tends to like take over the beer. So it's a hint. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Let me know what you think later. Uh, Ninety-one later.